Do you ever feel out of place when you're in a group of people? Do you ever feel like everybody else around you is smarter and you feel a bit like a fraud? Like if other people knew exactly who you were or exactly how little you knew, then they wouldn't want to be friends with you. You wouldn't have the position that you have. All of these things could be symptoms of imposter syndrome. I am Dr. Patrice Berry, licensed clinical psychologist, and here I provide educational resources on a variety of topics. Imposter syndrome is real, and it's not a clinical diagnosis. It's something that you can take a simple checklist, or you can Google it, and you can see if you identify with it at all. Imposter syndrome is really common in people of color and people from marginalized groups. People that feel that they're really not represented within their field. I'm a clinical psychologist and only 5% of psychologists are African American. So being in a field where most of the people do not look like me and I may not see myself represented, it can be easy for me to feel as if I did not fit or belong. I also want to mention that if you are early in your career, it is really common to have some imposter syndrome. And I wanted to talk about some things that I did to work through it for myself and some tools that I give my clients. There are five different types of imposter syndrome and people may find themselves in and out of one of those types. I got this information from a graphic online. Type one is the perfectionist. This is the person where if they don't do it perfect, then they feel like they are inept and they're horrible and they don't let themselves make mistakes. And that's the thing that somebody that's operating within a perfectionist mindset, setting unrealistic standards for themselves, and maybe they're also setting unrealistic standards for their team, that makes it very difficult for them to enjoy their successes, enjoy the good things. Because let's say they didn't hit their target 100% of the time, let's say they hit it 98% of the time. Well, this person might feel like a failure because they didn't get the 100%. This is the person that is upset that they got a 95 and they didn't get a 100 on the test. Often roots of perfectionism and the reasons why people may feel this way, it can be rooted in childhood. And so that's where if you find yourself identifying with any of these things a lot, you can sometimes partner with a coach or sometimes you might need to work with a therapist if there's some unresolved trauma. Brene Brown has some amazing resources on the gift of imperfection. That's one of her books that I really valued reading as a mom because mom guilt is real. Mom shaming is real. And being able to let myself make mistakes, know that I'm not going to hit the mark every time, that can all be really helpful. Type two is the expert, the person that thinks they have to know everything. So a person with imposter syndrome, they may feel like they know very little and that everybody else knows so much. When in reality, each person probably knows their part and we all work well together. It's unrealistic to think that one person has to know everything. And they may feel that if they don't have the answer or if they're not able to answer somebody's question, they may feel like they have less value. And this is where people's worth really has to come from within. And within the last year, I've done a lot of work to distinguish self-worth from confidence. So I've met people that are confident. They're confident about their looks. They're confident about their personality, but they struggle in the area of self-worth, feeling as though they deserve good things. They deserve happiness. They deserve joy and peace. They may struggle in self-worth, but have some confidence. And that's where doing some of that internal work to look within to see what things are getting in the way of them allowing themselves to experience good things. And some things that I've heard recently is that some people grew up in survival mode and they never learned how to thrive. And you would think that thriving would come naturally, but survival is actually what comes naturally because that's what our brains are wired for. We are wired for survival. And within the last year, so I'm recording this on New Year's Day, 2020 was rough. There was a lot that happened. If you're watching this video, you made it through it. And I am so proud of you. 
And at the same time, there was some good in 2020. The holidays, if it hadn't been for a pandemic, I would have traveled more. I would have went to North Carolina to see family. I would have went out for Christmas Eve. We have a special Christmas Eve dinner. I would have done a bunch of things if we hadn't been in the midst of a pandemic. But it's pretty relaxing to not do things, to not have that pressure, to not feel like you have to get things a certain way. This was probably one of the least stressful holidays I've had in a really long time. So that's why I say sometimes we have to learn how to thrive. And I have a whole book coming on that and I will post information here once it's available. Type three is the soloist, the person that thinks they have to do it all by themselves. If for any reason they need help or support, that they are somehow less capable. And it really stinks when there's a boss that has this man's mentality because they're not able to delegate to their team. This is also the person that maybe feels a little insecure in their position and not really wanting other people to learn what they do, feeling as though they could easily be replaced. So this is the person that believes that they have to do it all themselves on their own without any assistance. And that's where Brene Brown's work on vulnerability can be really helpful. Everybody needs help sometimes. There's no problem, there's no issue with asking for help. There are some work environments where vulnerability is not encouraged and that's a whole other video. But if you are in a supportive, encouraging environment, being able to ask for help, being able to be vulnerable can be really helpful. I've sometimes given clients advice to let their boss know what their career goals are. Because sometimes you can feel as though you're being overlooked, but people may not know what it is that you really want. Type four is the superwoman. And it is my mission to demolish the superwoman's cape because it is not healthy to feel like you have to do it all. This is the person that believes if I were really competent, if I was really this, then I should be able to homeschool my children and work full time and keep a spotless house and cook three course meals every. This is the person that feels overburdened and they are really feeling guilty and maybe even some shame that they can't do it all. Can I tell you a secret? None of us can do it all. Something that I like to give my clients, something that I like to give when I had a team, the things that I would say when people would say, Dr. Barry, how do you do it all? I would say, I don't, I don't do it all. There are things that don't get done. And that doesn't make me less of a person. I think it is helpful and normal and healthy if the option is stay up all night washing every dish and cleaning the house or having a little bit of peace. I would rather you have some peace, wake up the next morning and do what you need to do than feel like you have to lose sleep to get everything done. And then lastly, type five is the great mind. This is the person who believes that they should be able to do everything quickly and with ease and with speed. Well, there are jobs, there are positions, there are situations that require a lot of effort. And often they are not seeing how other people may struggle or they're not seeing where their strengths are. Because maybe my strength is being able to come up with problems to solutions and somebody else's strength might be being able to put together mechanical things. I am not a mechanical person. I can follow directions, okay, but I can't fix my car. I have no desire to do that and that's okay. So people being able to hold and acknowledge what their strengths are, that can be extremely helpful. Because often when people are seeing what they are not, they are not seeing what they are. And that's a gift that I gave myself as I was growing up and becoming a psychologist. I was okay acknowledging there are some cases that aren't for me. That is extremely problematic when people think I should be able to do everything. I should be the expert on absolutely everything. Because then you might end up doing a really bad job, but maybe you were working outside of your area of expertise. And so that's where I stay within my lane. Sometimes people are working from a scarcity mindset where they feel like oh, there's only so much money available. I have to make sure that I get all the resources in order to be successful. 
instead of honing their area of expertise and people leaving their services satisfied and happy because they actually met their need. I hope these tips help. If you have more questions or anything, you can comment down below. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. I hope you have a great day.